Hey everyone, today is going to be a fun video. I'm going to show you how to make oobleck using this commonly available cornstarch powder and water. Uh, basically two common household materials. So this cornstarch powder is uh, basically a kilogram of cornstarch powder and what I'm going to do is I'm going to first pour all of this into this container here and hopefully not make a mess. Okay, great. Now that's done, I'm going to be pouring out water inside this. Uh, but in order to understand the science, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be probing this cornstarch powder and water, also known as oobleck, through two methods because we're going to be scientists. We're going to be using a steel ball and bouncing it and also a wooden spoon to see how well it spreads. So I'm going to be adding water in increments of 100 ml or it's basically 100 grams and I'm going to be seeing what's ha what happens. So I'm going to make sure to mix this out very nicely. And well, right now you're seeing that not much is happening. It's basically a powder. I just put the ball through it and you know, it just, it's a, all right. but now I'm going to be adding water in increments of um, 100 ml. So this is 200 and then let's see what happens now. So the powder, I feel like I'm in a cooking class. This is a lot of fun and very calming. Okay. This is now 300 ml. And you might be noticing that it's starting to get a little bit chunky. Um, I want it to be nice and uniform. So what's the ball doing? It's still kind of just staying flat on top of the powder. Okay, let's see what's happening at 400 ml. Put a ball. Oh, you see that? The ball is actually starting to go in now. Right? And you can actually measure how long it takes to go in. Just pause this video and look at how long it takes. I'm going to repeat the experiment again. Um, you see, basically, you know, you can see how long it takes to go from and you're just starting to see it to it basically goes down all the way to the bottom and this we are right at this 400 ml something really cool starting to happen um, so it comes out like a solid but then it slowly starts to drain so you know is this a solid or this is a is this a liquid it's kind of like somewhere in the middle because you see you see and see like these solid chunks here but then if you hold it for long enough time it becomes a liquid but as of now there's still a lot of powder in there all right the spoon's not working if you want to mix this you just need to really get in I'm adding another 100, so now we're at 700 ml of water. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that cool? I'm going to see what happens when I put a ball in it. You see, it goes down slowly. Right? The interesting thing, not quite yet, but you can see that when you push through it slowly, it's like kind of like a liquid because it's moving, but then when you try to move it faster, it suddenly becomes hard. Now this is 800 milliliters of water. So we have 800 milliliters of water and a thousand grams of cornstarch, which is essentially uh, 50 percent slightly more than 50 percent cornstarch and uh, and less than 50 percent of water so we're almost having the same equal content of cornstarch and water and that's pretty important because 
once you get to 50% of cornstarch and 50% of water, or somewhere slightly larger than 50%, you what you start seeing is that it's sort of somewhere in between a solid and a liquid. And that's the when it gets really interesting, when this oobleck becomes a you know, magic consistency of oobleck to play with, right? So look at this, for example, it's beautiful, right? See how, you know, I can mold it up, and it's like a solid. But then, I just let it go, and it just goes all the way inside. So here you see when I'm pushing it, it's pretty easy to push and go slowly, but when I push it hard, it becomes much harder to push. Right? And this is what's known as a shear thickening fluid. Essentially, when I try to push through it at a lower rate, it goes slowly, but then when I try to push it faster, then it punches up and it becomes more viscous. So when I'm pushing it at a low rate, it's kind of like water, for example. Right? You see it's just pushing through nicely, maybe like milk or cream. But then when I try to push it fast, it all just punches up. And that's why it's called as a shear thickening. Um, at a faster, when I try to push it at the faster rate, it just thickens up. Now the opposite of shear thickening would be what's called a shear thinning, right? As the name suggests. Um, an example of that is quicksand, right? You can think about it as you wouldn't want to run on quicksand because the faster you run on quicksand, the more easier it is to go inside. And that's just not good, right? You don't want to be end up at the bottom of quicksand. But um, people have shown, I think there was a Mythbusters uh, video where they showed that essentially if you ran, you could actually run on this cornstarch and water. See that? And I applied a large force on it. You can essentially, you can like bounce on this and you can run on this. Another example of a, uh, an example of a commonly found household shear thinning material would be ketchup, where if you apply more force on the ketchup, the ketchup bottle falls more easily. Think about you know, hitting the bad bottom of that Heinz ketchup and then it falls through. You wouldn't want this stuff to be in a ketchup bottle, would you? Because then you would apply force on it and it wouldn't come out. You'd just have to like turn it and wait for it to fall for an eternity. And this kind of stuff is, is really fun to play with. Let's add a little bit of more of water. We are at 900 ml of cornstarch and water. It still goes through, right? Um, it still goes through. And now that it's mixed, it, you know, it takes some amount of time to go through and it's more or less the same wherever I put it. Now we're finally at 1000 ml of water. So that's that 50% of cornstarch, 50% of water. Um, you know, it's a, little bit, it's a little bit thin for me. I still liked it when it was more like 800 um, milliliters of uh, water and 1000 of cornstarch, a slightly bit more of cornstarch, but you know, this is also fun. Um, each person has their own favorite consistency of oobleck, right? So you see how, you know, this is more like a liquid. And this is kind of more the, the, the traditional oobleck that you might see. Like, if, all right, a little bit more. This is 1,100 ml. So now it's just a little bit more of water. And now you see it's basically, you know, it's more of a just regular liquid. But interestingly, what's happening is, you see the top, I'm just able to go like this, right? So the top just has water. And since cornstarch is a little bit heavier, it's settled down all the way to the bottom. Now, this is a really fun thing to play with, you know, whether you're a kid, whether you can even be, um, you can show this to your toddlers, you can, as long as they don't put it in their mouth, although it's just baking stuff. Um, you, you know, elementary school kids can have fun, middle school, high school, and this is also not just fun, it's also some beautiful science. Turns out that this cornstarch is actually very much related to traffic jams. So just like in traffic when you know, everybody tries to move out and there's a lot of cars, then it becomes, flow becomes much harder right? and it's harder to flow. But when everybody is moving nicely and smoothly, then everybody can flow, let's say, you know, when it's not rush hour, then there's less of traffic jams. Um, and that was actually found out very recently. So this sheer thickening property is definitely an active research area. Um, and it also has some really cool applications. Um, people have found that 
if this was put in the middle of body armor like Kevlar, then it, you could have the same strength of Kevlar, but a fraction of the weight. So one third of Kevlar and cornstarch could give you the same essential body armor um, as compared to just, you know, Kevlar. And what would be the use? Well, think about this as, you know, somebody puts a bullet through you, right? And it doesn't go through because this cornstarch is sheer thickening. But there is a downside though, because if somebody were to slowly, you know, hopefully not pierce you with a knife and if they knew about the sheer thickening uh, hopefully they wouldn't um, then in that case you would still uh, it wouldn't be very nice all right i hope you had fun with this and don't forget to like and subscribe and i will see you next time